FCBC being used in my college students. I have experienced a lot of pain in my life. My mother caused me a lot of pain as a child. One time a baseball broke my jaw. Ouch. I have suffered a gunshot wound. I've been cut by knives. I've had injuries from broken windows. I've had weightlifting injuries. The list you know, can go on and on. Uh, but none of these compare to the pain that I've been feeling in the last seven months. I've never had any issues saying goodbye to people even to my family. When it was time for something new, it was time for something new. I would miss people, but had no problem moving on. Not this time. This time, I'm struggling. This time, I'm in pain. My heart hurts. I feel like I'm being torn between what I want to do and what I have to do. My heart wants to stay here with you, but my head knows that I must return home. So just over four years ago, I drug my family down to Dallas to attend ETS. I believe God was leading us here for seminary. I was shocked when I got here. Nothing was what I thought it would, it would be. If I'm truly honest, I have to admit that I did not particularly enjoy my time at ETS. I felt like quite a bit of my courses were a waste of time. I realized that about 80% of what I was being taught at ETS I had already learned in Bible college. So I came to the conclusion that God must have brought me here for reasons other than attending those reasons are unique. I believe you are the reason God brought me to Dallas, Texas. I'm glad God led me to Dallas because now I have you. And I like you a lot better than seminary anyway. <laughs> you have become my family. You really have. I love you just like I love my family. I don't say that simply because it sounds good or because it's poetic or dramatic or whatever. No, when I say that, I really mean that. There's nothing I would not do for you, nothing I would not give. Anything I have is yours. You have become my brothers and my sisters, and I love you. I think the first time I announced I would leave back in December, we all understood this. I made the announcement, and I began to cry. And then we all began to cry. And then we prayed. It was an important moment for us. It was then, I think, that you understood how much I loved you, and I understood how much you loved me. We understood each other at that moment. It was intimate, it was also sad, and it was absolutely beautiful. I will never forget that moment. My Bible has a mark at the bottom of the page where Philippians 2, 1 through 11 is. That's the passage that I preached that day. A tear fell from my eye and landed there, permanently marking the page and setting me a permanent reminder of that moment. Since that moment, I have felt the pain of leaving you, and it hurts. I had nights where I cried just thinking about it. Wow, you are so beautiful to me. You hold a very special place in my heart that no one else can have. You always will. The reason I have been experiencing so much pain is because I have come to love you so deeply. And I do not want to leave you at all. The relationships I have with you are incredible, and I've come to cherish them. Who would want to leave that? No one. But at this point, I honestly have no choice. I almost feel forced to do this. I know it's for a good thing to help my family, but that doesn't make it easy or even enjoyable. I'm not enjoying it. But I do it because it is the right thing to do. I know that because of Scripture. But in my heart, in my heart, it feels like I'm making a huge mistake. But you must always do what is right, no matter how it feels. Even when you feel wrong, you must do what you know to be right. And so now I must leave you. For that, I'm truly sorry. I'm sorry I must leave you. I know I need you, and you need me too. It's going to be okay. God is faithful, and he will meet our needs. And we will still have each other, even though we will be in different locations. What else can I say at this point? Well, I can say quite a lot, actually. Um, in truth, I could probably go on for days expressing my feelings for you and describing how incredible and beautiful you are. You really are. You are beautiful people because my God has made you that way. I could go on talking about how we have become family probably for years. And you really are my family. God has made it so. I could go on telling you how much I love you, even though we don't really say that too much being Asian. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But I do love you. And when I tell people <coughs> those words, I really mean them. I do not say them to just anyone. I do not call just anyone my family. I'm dead serious when I say that. I love you. You are my family. And I would do anything for you. I would die for you if necessary. I could go on. But I'd rather challenge you at this point. First of all, I want you to know that you are people who possess great power. God has made you a powerful people. The truth is, you are powerful beyond measure. Marianne Williamson said, Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. We ask ourselves, Who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. You are powerful. God has given you great power and great responsibility. Because of who you are in Christ, I believe in you. I want you to know that, if nothing else. A lot of times I think we think that we can't do a lot of things that other people can. This, this is not true. You, the people in this room that I look at right now, can change the world. I believe in you. And I expect from you great things that match God's greatness and his glory. Start believing in yourself because you believe in the God you serve. You are powerful. Second, you are light. In saving you, God has made you beautiful, beautiful people. You are some of the most beautiful people I have ever met in my life. God has made you light. In Christ, you are the light of the world and the world is in darkness. The world needs you because the world needs Jesus. You are a bright light. Of <coughs> you are a bright light God has created to shine into the darkness of the world. Be light. Third, you have a mission. God, in saving you, has called you to complete a mission. This mission is to make him known to the world, and it is an incredible mission. I look forward to serving with you on this mission. Let's preach Christ to the world together. Do not ignore this mission. Instead, embrace it. It is an incredible purpose and privilege to have this mission completed. So many miss out on it. Don't do that. Make Christ known. Fourth, surrender your lives fully to Christ right now. Don't wait. Today is the day. This is what God wants from you, and it is what I want from you for God. It is time to truly begin living lives of surrendered obedience to our great God. Do it now. Do not wait. You will be awed as to what God will do with your life. Give him everything. He deserves it. This is my challenge to you. Now, a few closing words. My dear precious family, I love you so much. I am saddened that I must leave you. I'm going to miss you so much, and I will always think of you. I want you to know that you can call me, text me, Facebook me, or anything you want, whenever you want, and I will always be there for you. Whatever you may need, if you ask me, I will give it without question. I'm here for you no matter what. I hope you will visit me, as there will always be a place for you no matter where I am. I will visit you as often as I can. I will always pray for you. Please pray for me too. We will need it. I love you. John 3.30 says, He must increase, but we must decrease. He must increase, but I must decrease. 1 Peter 2.9 But you are a chosen people. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Preach Christ. Preach Christ. Preach Christ. To live as Christ. To live as Christ. To live as Christ. Be Christ. Be Christ. Be Christ. Surrender now. Today, go before him. Commit yourself completely to him. I want to read Acts chapter 20, verse 1.
verses 17 to 24 through 